Hello, thank you for your interest in learning how to create and enhance teaching resources with Alpheus. My name is Bridget Elmas, and I am the Executive Director and Software Architect for Alpheus. Alpheus is a nonprofit organization. Our mission is building free, evidence based, open source software to support worldwide study of classical languages and literatures. As a nonprofit, we are funded solely through, through philanthropy. We are very fortunate to have generous donors who believe in our mission. This is how we are able to build these tools and make them available freely to anyone who wants to use them. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about why you might want to use the Alpheus tools, what you can do with them, and how to choose which ones are right for your needs. I will show you some ways you can use them to enhance your existing online teaching resources or to create new ones. The presentation was originally envisioned as an interactive workshop, and I regret that the current medium doesn't allow for a question and answer period. I would encourage you to email us if you need more information on any of what I am about to present, or as you try to use Alpheus. The support email address is support at alpheus.net, and you can find it in the handout and on the Alpheus.net website. You can also send a direct message to us on social media. So why would you use Alpheus? We hope that you will use the Alpheus tools to empower online self-directed learning by providing access to linguistic resources directly from within an existing online learning or reading environment. Use of these tools can facilitate self-initiated exploration of word meanings, usages, inflections, and grammatical constructions. Ultimately, our goal is to encourage appreciation of all languages. Now, what specifically can you do with Alpheus? Activating Alpheus for a page enables word selection. Double click on a word and you will get a morphological parse, identification of lemmas, and a short definition. From here, Deeper word study can be performed using the icons at the top of the pop-up. Clicking the define icon will bring up a full definition from one of the available lexicons. We use Lewis and Short for Latin. For Greek, we have a number of lexicons available, including LSJ, The Middle Little, Outenreath, Dodson and Abs Abbott Smith. We also include short definitions from Wilfred Major's core Greek vocabulary. We have two dictionaries for Arabic, one for Persian, and experimental support for Chinese and Syriac in our latest release. Clicking on a linked grammatical term, such as noun, third declension, nominative, or vocative in the screenshot, will bring up the relevant section of a linked grammar. Our latest release offers a choice of Latin for Latin of Allen and Greenow or Bennett. We use Smythe for Greek. Enabling site-specific customization of grammars and other resources is also something we're considering if there is an interest. If you are working with Latin, clicking the Examples button will bring you a list of examples of how the word has been used across the canonical corpus. This feature is only in available in Latin for now, and it is made possible thanks to the Packard Humanities Institute, who have made their concordance service available to us via an API. You can limit the results to a specific author and a specific work. The examples are also linked directly to their full context on the Packard site. Clicking the inflect icon will bring up inflection tables focused on the matching inflections. You can also look up any word you choose, whether or not it appears on the page, by clicking the lookup icon from the toolbar and entering the word. The new autocomplete functionality is provided by the Logion service from Helma Dick at the University of Chicago. If you are working in Greek, you can now type the input in beta code, and it will be converted to Unicode as you type. 
At any time, you can expand the Alpheus toolbar to access all of the various tools. The tools are all available from the panel as well. From these tools, you can browse all of the inflection tables, regardless of the word being looked up. You can also browse the entire grammar, and you can log in to your user account. Creating and logging into a user account enables you to accumulate a list of all the words you look up, as well as the context in which you have seen them, the number of times you've looked a word up, and when you last did so. You can sort by the word, frequency of lookup, or date of lookup. You can also filter by the current session, the lemma, word, most, re most recently added, or by those words you have flagged as being important. Here you see the context in which I have looked up the word fratres. An excerpt of the text is shown along with the link to the original page. You can also export your word list as a tabular file. You have two options. You can either download all of the fields of the entire data set, or you can download just lemmas and short definitions in a format that can be easily uploaded into a flashcard application such as Quizlet. Here, I've imported my downloaded word list data set into Quizlet and created a slide deck from them. As of right now, the word list is the main additional feature that logging into a user account gives you. In the future, we expect to add support for other sorts of user data, for example, translations and commentaries. Creating a user account is entirely optional. We do not collect any personal data other than an email address, and we do not share your data. You can see the privacy policy on our website for more information. Clicking the Settings tool allows you to customize various aspects of the application. If you are working with Latin and your native language is not English, you may be interested in enabling the experimental feature that provides lemma translations in several other languages. This feature is possible thanks to the data of the Colatinus project. It adds a translation of the lemma below the short definition in the pop-up. So th those are the basics of the Alpheus functionality. Let's talk now about how you can access it. Alpheus functionality can be brought to an online text in a number of different ways. One approach is to use the Alpheus browser extensions, which, when added to your Chrome, Firefox, or Safari browser, enable all of the Alpheus features in any text you can read in your browser. We also provide a JavaScript library, which can be embedded directly in a website or application. This allows for site-specific customizations of the Alpheus interface and full support for use on mobile devices. We use this library in our own reader environment. It is also used in the Digital Latin Library, among other sites, and can be easily added to classroom sites, online digital editions, websites, GitHub pages, learning management systems, and so forth. So to clarify, you would use the Alpheus browser extensions if you want to use Alpheus on any web page. This includes Google Docs, Google Classroom, other learning management systems, basically anything that is served in the browser as HTML. But due to browser restrictions, you cannot use the Alpheus browser extensions on a mobile device. We do have solutions for mobile devices, and I will talk about those in a little bit. So don't worry, if you want to use Alpheus on an iPhone, tablet, or Android device, you definitely can, just not the browser extensions. The ability to use Alpheus on Google Docs means that you can use it on pretty much any text you can put in a Google document. I have here an excerpt from an open access novella in Latin published by Eleanor Arnold. You can even use it on a Google Classroom streams, activities, forms, and quizzes. I am envisioning here an online classroom that has questions posed to students in Latin, which they can use Alpheus to be sure they understand before formulating their responses. 
or assignments of textual readings and other linguistic exercises that students can explore with the necessary aids at their fingertips. Quite a lot can be done by combining the Alpheus browser extensions with many of the existing online tools and resources that you and your students already use. It requires no additional technical knowledge to use them. We recognize that this has a flip side. Once your students know about Alpheus, they can use it even when you may not intend them to have access to it. But in fact, that's the reality of remote online learning. And another way to think about it is that if your students are using Alpheus, it enables them to stay focused on your page, text, and activity with resources that give them the tools to think about why and how the language is used. It is not just spitting out answers that they can copy without knowing what they mean. In a world where remote online learning is going to be unavoidable, we hope that Alpheus can fill in some of the gaps and enable students to stay immersed in the language even when they can't have an instructor in front of them. This may take some rethinking of paradigms to figure out how to make the most effective use of Alpheus for learning. There is no one right way, but I hope that by thinking about the sorts of language learning activities that are enabled by Alpheus, new ideas will emerge. As a recap of what we've seen so far, here's what I know I can do with Alpheus. Reading a text or an assignment, I encounter a word I don't know. I can look it up. From there, I may be offered several options for what the word might be. If I'm still not sure, perhaps I will consult the usage examples to see if they provide a better understanding. Or for ideas, if I need to create a translation. Maybe I will need to consult the grammar to remember what the dative is. Or explore the inflection tables to try to memorize the case endings. At any time, I can consult my word list to see where else I might have seen the word. Installing the browser extension is pretty simple. You can search for Alpheus in the Chrome Web Store, the Firefox add-on site, or the Mac App Store. Or you can just follow the link from the Alpheus homepage. It should detect your browser and operating system and bring you to the appropriate location directly. We have tutorials for all three supported browsers available on the Alpheus Net website so I will not cover the installation process in greater detail here. If you have any questions or difficulties with installation, I encourage you to check out the tutorials. Again, as a reminder, the browser extensions can be used on any page on the web, but unfortunately, due to browser restrictions, they do not work on mobile devices. So how do you use Alpheus on, mobile, on a mobile device? There are some options. First, you can use the Alpheus Reader. Alpheus has published a core set of open access Latin and Greek texts, and you can use the Alpheus Reader with any of these texts. I will bring you through a quick review of the mobile version of the Alpheus Reader interface. The Alpheus Reader is also available on the desktop, and there it looks quite similar to the browser extensions. You can navigate easily through the reader interface to select a language, author, and work. All of the Alpheus tools that are available in the browser extension are also available in the reader. From a mobile device, they will look a bit different because the screen real estate is limited. The tools can be accessed by touching the tools icon in the upper right. On the desktop, the same floating toolbar as used in the browser extension is available in the reader. Rather than a pop-up, we have a split screen panel to show lookup results and the various tools in portrait mode. In portrait mode, it is at the bottom and landscape mode to the left or right of the text. On the mobile device, word selection works by doing a long tap on the word. It can take a couple of tries to get the hang of it. At any time, you can access a help screen by touching the help icon. In addition to the mobile interface, sentence diagrams are another feature that can be explored from within our reader interface. For those texts that have been aligned with tree bank annotations, you can view the tree containing the selected word in the Arethusa viewer. 
There are an increasing number of open access tree bank annotations created by classicists that can be linked to text. I will cover this topic more fully a bit later in the presentation. We have prepared a set of video tutorials on using Alpheus on both the desktop and mobile devices. These are available through, from our website. The tutorials are really good, they aren't too long, and give a thorough walkthrough of each of the features I have presented. I encourage you to watch them. The Alpheus Reader is fine if you want to do a quick lookup of a word from a mobile device or use one of the open access texts we publish. But what if the text you want to read is not there? The Alpheus Embedded Library is a JavaScript library that you can use to enable Alpheus on both the desktop and mobile devices on your own site. It does require the ability to publish a web page. Note, one limitation is that right now, user logins are not enabled for third-party sites. If there is an interest, we would consider adding support for this in the future. It is now very simple to add Alpheus functionality to your own site. You don't actually need to know anything about programming. A button on the Alpheus Net website makes it possible to just copy and paste what needs to be added to your page. This can be used in a content management system such as Google Sites. And if you do know a bit of HTML and JavaScript, you can see that it is just a small snippet linking in some JavaScript and style sheets from a content delivery network. And a single JavaScript call activates it for the page, providing all of the same functionality that is offered in the Alpheus browser extensions without requiring your users to install anything. You can use it as is, or you can customize a number of things, including branding, positioning of the interface elements, and which events are used to trigger the lookups. When you click the Copy Embed Code button, it asks you to provide an identifier for your site. Right now, this can be any text you like, but we recommend using the URL at which you will deploy your site so that it is easily identifiable. If you click the Include Sample Latin Text checkbox, you will also get a little snippet of text, which is all set for use with Alpheus. This is what a very simple Google site with Alpheus enabled might look like. Here, we have a snippet of text from the Aeneid, and two of the words, verumque and profugus, have been enabled so that if you click on them, they will produce the Alpheus pop-up. The other words are not enabled. You can enable all of the text or just parts of it, depending on your preferences or student needs. This is one of the Alpheus customizations that is possible when you can control the HTML of your site. The process of embedding Alpheus in Google Sites is straightforward. You click the embed button when editing a page and paste it in the snippet, paste in the snippet that you copied from the Alpheus Net site. From there, you can edit the text and customize the functionality. The original plan for this workshop was to do a hands-on session with participants setting up their own Google Sites. When everything shut down due to COVID, with so many classrooms shifting to remote learning, we decided to publish a tutorial video that walks through the steps. So if you are interested in trying this out, please watch the tutorial. We also publish a more advanced tutorial for those who have a little HTML and JavaScript knowledge. If you run into difficulties, email us. We can provide some email support. For more complex cases, we are exploring different levels of subscription sponsorship. You can find out more about that on our organization's GitHub sponsors page the link for which is in the handout. I also would like to show you a few examples of how other sites that have embedded Alpheus in the this way, to show a few examples of some other sites that have embedded Alpheus in this way, to give you a sense of how and why you might want to do this. This is Kevin Balestrini's Project Archaea site, which provides graded readers of the AP curriculum, among other texts. He has enabled Alpheus on the Tier 4 texts as reading aids. He has also restricted the functionality to just the pop-up, so no grammars, full definitions, inflection tables, and so forth. Here's another example. A group of graduate students at Tufts University created an online commentary site to discuss the work of Epictetus. They embedded Alpheus for the Greek text to facilitate reading and discussion. Here, they have disabled the toolbar entirely 
so that only the words on the page are clickable and no other lookups are possible. This is an example of a site someone created which uses Alpheus to enhance side-by-side -side reading of Plato in Greek, Latin, and English. Here is a digitization of Young's The Tutorial Greek Reader, digitized by Krzysztof Jasinski, with Alpheus embedded as a reading aid for the Greek. I think there are really many interesting possibilities for student projects like this that can take advantage of the Alpheus tools to make a website accessible to a wide audience of viewers. Many students have the basic skills needed to create a website. We would love for you to encourage your students to experiment with Alpheus, and please do share the results if they do. Now, I'd like to come back to a point made earlier in the presentation about linking text to open access syntactic dependency trees. What is the benefit of linking a tree bank to a text? In this example, Bob Gorman at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln has put together trees of Cicero's De Mazitia for his Latin 301 class. When combined with Alpheus, this enables his students to see not only all of the possible lemmas for a word, but also the specific lemma and inflection used in the context. This size is identified by the little red triangle and tree next to the ad, next to the entry for multa, the adjective. From there, the student can click on the tree icon and see a full syntactic parse of the sentence and the place of the selected word multa in it. I should note that Bob uses trees in his teaching from the very beginning of Latin 101, so that by the time his students get here, they are already familiar with them. He starts out with much simpler sentences and simpler labels for the grammatical relationships between words. Our tools for creating trees afford a good deal of flexibility and customization in this regard. Bob has been working with Alpheus and trees for a long time. Inspired in part by his work, in our latest release, we have collaborated with the Perseids Project at Tufts University to make it easier for people using Alpheus to take advantage of the growing repositories of tree bank data being produced by classicists around the country and the world. Here is a very simple web page with some text from Caesar's Gallic Wars. The text is linked to a tree bank of this text that was edited and published by Matthew Harrington and his students at Tufts University. The linking is done entirely in the HTML markup of the page by adding attributes on the sections of text that identify where the tree bank data is and aligning the text on the page to the corresponding sentence in the tree bank data. There are already at least a couple of open access repositories of tree bank texts that are available for use in this way. Matthew Harrington has created and published trees of all of the passages in the AP Latin curriculum. So let's think for a minute about how this all ties together. If we go back to our Google Sites example, imagine now that you want to create a page where your students can study the sentences in the passages that are part of the AP curriculum. You can easily create pages with selected sentences or even whole passages, and then take advantage of the Harrington open access trees to provide automatic disambiguation of lemmas and morphology and visualizations of the syntax. The process of doing the linking is quite simple. You identify the URL of the repository for the trees. Then you identify the document. And finally, you identify the sentence. Of course, you can also just access these trees directly and not worry about linking them with Alpheus. The benefit to bringing them into Alpheus in this way is that you can create your own online teaching resource that guides your students in the way that is most useful to them and to you. There are other open access tree bank repositories out there as well, and they are not limited to Latin. Vanessa Gorman of Nebraska Lincoln has published several hundreds of thousands of words of Greek prose. We have step-by-step -step instructions for linking trees to texts, and we'll continue to improve upon this process as we receive feedback. Links to this and all of the other references are also included in the handout. 
It is also possible to produce trees yourself, and it can be a very interesting and collaborative pedagogical exercise for students. The Perseids Project and Alpheus are jointly maintaining the Arethusa Tree Bank Editor for this purpose. Here, I'm using Perseids and Arethusa to create a new tree of text from the novella in our earlier Google Docs example. Vanessa and Bob Gorman have been doing this for years with their Latin and Greek students using these tools. Their Gorman Classic site provides an excellent set of resources for getting started. Vanessa is also working on an open access online course that makes extensive use of trees and Elpheus to guide self-directed learning of ancient Greek. What I have sh shown you so far covers the range of current functionality in Alpheus. As a nonprofit, our work is directly driven by our mission. We want to help people learn how to learn these languages as efficiently and enjoyably as possible. So we encourage you to let us know what features you think would be most useful. I can tell you some of the ones that are on our, are on our current roadmap. In the coming year, our focus for new features is going to be on adding capabilities that allow users to interact more directly with text and to collaborate both with us and each other to make the tools better. One of the tools we built several years ago is an alignment editor that allows people to align translations with primary text. We will be working on a re-envisioning of this tool to allow people to create and align translations as they are reading with the Alpheus tools and to save these to their user account. Users will be able to share these translations and alignments with others in a variety of formats. We will also be adding features that allow users to provide feedback on the morphological characteristics and short definitions. The open access parsers and data that Alpheus uses to provide its functionality are not perfect and can always be improved upon. We would like to allow people to let us know when results are missing, or incorrect, and also to suggest their own interpretations. We hope then to offer the ability to many other sorts of user annotations and commentary. We are working to expand support for users whose native language is not English. We are currently collaborating with a group of professors, technologists, and scholars in France to add support for French short definitions of Greek words. We would also like to expand upon the resources that are available in Alpheus. One personal dream of mine is to find ways that Alpheus can be used to make the study of classics more inclusive. I think it would be wonderful, for example, to have a set of short definitions that have been updated to eliminate references and language that perpetuate racist and sexist attitudes. Supporting self-study is also, we hope, a key step in this direction. The next step is facilitating contributions from users, both individually and collectively. Yet another is facilitating comparisons of historical and contemporary cultures and their reactions to each other's literary creations. Today, there is no reason why one can only participate in this conversation by attending an elite school, and broader participation can only enrich this conversation. We hope one day to enable people to include recita recitations of poetry and other multimedia to create rich, personalized, multimodal representations of these texts. We also want to continue our expansion of the breadth of primary languages supported. One of our long-term goals is to expose and understand how language influences thought. People can and do already use Alpheus to explore texts in Greek, Latin, Arabic, Persian, and English. Gese, Syriac, and Chinese are in ex early experimental phases. We would like to continue to improve upon our support for these languages and expand to others, including Hebrew, Aramaic, Coptic, and Sanskrit. This slide shows a prototype alignment of Plato's Euthyphro <laughs> in Greek and Chinese that we have created together with the Thesaurus Linguae Syriacae project. So those are dreams for the future. For now, let us, let's end by recapping what I hope you have learned today about using Alpheus to create and enhance your teaching resources. 
Why would you use Alpheus? To encourage inquisitiveness about language, providing access to linguistic resources directly from within an existing online learning and re or reading environment to facilitate self-initiated exploration and learning. What can you do with Alpheus today? From any web page, you can look up words and access lemmas, morphology, short and full definitions, examples, grammars, and inflection tables. You can keep and manage your word lists, and you can create websites that take advantage of the many customizations of the Alpheus functionality that are possible. How can you use the tools in your own teaching? You can let your students know that the tools are there. You can incorporate them into assignments. You can create your own websites that make of use of Alpheus in specific and custom ways. You can take advantage of open access resources to present syntax trees of text. You can be creative in how you use Alpheus and encourage creativity in your students. Thank you very much for watching our session. I'm sorry it could not be as interactive as originally planned, but I encourage you all to take a look at the tutorials and the links provided in the handouts and to get in touch if you have any questions or would like some help in getting started. We are always interested in receiving feedback on how we can make Alpheus better and more useful to learner learners of classical languages. So we hope to hear from you.